known of uh, well known of uh, much of you probably, and he's one of the the important persons in the landscape of uh, finite elements and numerical methods of engineering. And today he's coming to to deliver a lecture in two parts. Today he will give a, a, a general overview of this uh, new idea he's uh, presenting to the world. And uh, tomorrow we will go more in the specific details. And uh, we look forward to uh, discovering this new idea that uh, you very kindly uh, agreed to come here to It's a very good opportunity for us to learn how somebody can uh, keep uh, active in in a late uh, stage of uh, his career. So nothing else to <laughs> nothing else to prove, but still a lot to a lot to contribute. So thank you, uh, Casey. Well, uh, thank you very much. Just before I start, let me give you some story behind it. When I was uh, retiring in uh, 2014, and there were about five or six, about three schools in Europe, three schools in USA, and two schools in Asia. He said, come over and give us your retirement talk. So I went there, I gave a talk, and they were very gracious after the talk. They took me out to some of the best restaurants that I knew had it in my entire life. And they asked me, now that you are retiring, what are you going to do for the rest of the time? I said, uh, I have a good problem that I meant to work on, but I never had a time, and no funding agency will fund this idea. So I never bothered to write a proposal, <clears throat> but now I'm free. I'm going to work on this. What is the case? I'm going to try to resuscitate. Resuscitate is a revive. Revive a force method. This force method, as you, some of you took fine elements know very well, they were overshadowed by displacement method. Reason why displacement method overshadow force method is once you have one element, you can keep adding assembly, assembly, you can solve 100, 100,000. Now I think. Latest news I heard is they solve 1.5 billion degrees free on a supercomputer. IBM CU supercomputer they are coming. Problem with the force method was assembly was very tedious. Only experts can do it. And even so, it was not flexible. So displacement really overshadowed. And after that, only minority of people who are doing skeletal design, like towels, things like that, uh, optimization, they use very special purpose uh, force method. So KC, that's a good problem. I know it's good problems. Do you know why? I said, yeah, tell me why. I said, because there will be no solution to that. You are not going to have a dementia while you are working until you are dead. <laughs> That's how they describe it to me. Now, what I am about to describe today is halfway between my ultimate goal of uh, force, generalized force method. This is about halfway there. I have developed a very general force method theory. I still have to work out some details, especially want to make sure that displacement method guys would not have a kind of prejudicial uh, uh, opinion of this force method. And also the classical force guys say, it's nothing new. 
So I want to send off both of these two off list to my friend. So maybe next next year I'll come back with the fourth method that's very easy to use. The key idea in both the today's talk and this fourth method is don't assemble. If you assemble fine element methods great. In force method, you're asking for big trouble. So the idea that I'm presenting today about displacement method to not assemble is really in the same philosophy to develop force method that does not require assembly. So too much of an introduction. So the view is the, the issue that, that I want to raise here is, uh, yes, you can always model FEM without assembly, but can you really solve it? Can you move one step behind? Yeah. That's OK. That's, 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 that's it. Thank you. Can you really solve it without assembly? And that's the today's main thing. Everybody knows you, you know you can write billion equation without assembly. Can you solve it? That was the question. And I have many um, colleagues that really tested this idea for uh, different applications, uh, triangular dynamics. Um, Quasi static problem, uh, ROM, which in structure mechanics known as a CMS, component mode synthesis, and lately the damage detection problem. Back in uh, my graduate student days, I, I asked my advisor to sign for a Berkeley course. What kind of a course are you taking? I'm going to take a fortress. Come on, Casey, you're in engineering. I cannot prove for you to take two or three classes. So there is a bus between Stanford and Berkeley uh, for students to come back and forth to take a courses. So I went to the class anyway. I told the instructor that my my advice in our approval you of course I'm gonna have to just audit. Anyway, um that's where I learned one always returns to where one starts. So like I said, I haven't started all the way back to the fourth method, but that's the idea. So when you look at 50s and 60s, really improving element quality and increasing number of unknowns, how to solve them efficiently was a big issue. Hundreds of hundred people devoted to that. And I'm myself, I'm myself guilty of, 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 of that. When you start to solve a really realistic problem on uh, supercomputers, uh, then people realize let's partition, assemble this and solve one by one. Okay? So it's going back partially from assembly assembly. As I said, there are two key enablers. In displacement method, assembly is automatic. And the guy who actually came up with the auto automatic assembly uh, is Professor Ed Wilson at Berkeley. He looks at 
very natural for you guys to use the final element how to assemble. But in good old days when they were starting with, with the final element, how to automate assembly was not as easy as what you might have thought. So he made a contribution, uh, Professor Ed Wilson contribution to automate that process. And in the uh, 60s, all foreign students who came to US for mechanics, they took his uh, 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 Fortran-based uh, code. The other one is, uh, of course, the availability of uh, um, parallel computers. The, the natural question, it's nice to ask a question sometimes, even to yourself. Because wouldn't it be nice to solve a set of small partitions involving only partition displacement, nothing else? OK? That's the question I said to myself, see whether I could actually do that. And up until now, without assembly, you had to introduce what we call interface uh, dual variable, which is Laplace multiplications. And my former colleague, uh, Shabir Farhad, is the really uh, original uh, uh, developer of Fetty and his colleagues and all that. So this is really now stand. Uh, Happy that you can <laughs> So we can ask the same question as I asked. Uh, can we actually construct the equations motion without involving Laplace multipliers for large scale? Not the small scale problem, large scale problem. And um, to do that, you really have to go back and ask a fundamental question. Why displacement method was so successful? And learn from there, see what we can use from that uh, methodology. Somehow not having to send so in other words, you need some what we call reverse engineering. If you want to develop something, you will have to do reverse engineering completely. You know, in engine, you assemble. And to understand how engine really works, you have to disassemble all the parts. OK? If that can be done, then um, there is a there is a historical precedent uh, that is the William Hamilton was an Irish, and Ireland at the time was a colony of England, where a astronomer in the colony was invited to Cambridge give talk. is not a trivial matter. And he was only two now. So he wanted to, well, we now know as Hamilton's principle, in a very humble way so that he would not antagonize Cambridge physicists. So what he said is, what I'm going to say, sorry, I, I don't have, to, what I'm about to say is, there are two ways, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. There are two ways science of One is discovery of a new method, but science can also advance in discovery of new mathematical tools. And he said, what I'm about to present is discovery of a new mathematical uh, method. And then he said, uh, very humbly said, 
what I'm about to say may not be that important, but there may be some intellectual pleasure looking at my equations, which is a Hamilton's equations. So I'm really inspired by historical, uh, of course, he's my hero, I'm a dynamicist. So Galileo and there are a lot of other people, but Galileo then jumped to Hamilton. So he's my second hero. So pictorially, this is what I have come up with before we get into detail. So when you assemble, when you assemble, uh, you have uh, in visually in computer you have a couple of square matrix. Okay. Yeah. But the idea here is I'm not gonna assemble ABC block diagram. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply what I call the uh, Projection operator. Projection operator has such property that P times P is a P. Okay. That's a qualification of projection operator. And this projection operator, if we multiply that projection operator to this block diagonal thing, and the unknown is much bigger, and then there's a right hand side, the solution X partition is exactly the same as solution assembled by a Boolean transformation. So that's the conclusion of my talk. Some of my friends, when I gave this talk, KC, you're really fooling, fooling us. It's not possible to do that. So what I did was I came up with the Simplest as possible example. I tried to sell this idea with a little more impressive example, but none of them will buy that. So this is the simplest as possible example. Two bar element. Left hand side is a fixed. So it's a two degree freedom problem. So you can see this uh, assemble the kg, assemble the mass. And force is applied at the unit. And when you solve this guy, uh, eigenvalue problem, uh, there are two eigenvalues. Uh, when you solve for d double dot equal to zero, this is the displacement. Now, I'm going to solve the same problem eigenvalue problem as well as a displacement using this equation, which means KD, PD times KD equal to PDF. And PD is what I said is a projection operator. So when I did that, apply in the partition form, the K matrix becomes that, M is a unity, and I have displacement one, one, two. One, one, two. Well, one, one, it should be same. Otherwise, you are not getting correct solution. And two is the same as a uh, two over here. Eigenvalue problem is two non-zero eigenvalues are exactly the same as Two non two eigenvalues of a assembled system. Since you know this guy is free, so there's a one visibility mode. And theoretically that should be zero. That's 10 to the minus 17. In a computer, there's no such thing zero. And the charm of PD turns out to be something like this. What it says is the following. From this node, this node, there is a coupling, okay? But 
on the free end, there's no coupling. Okay. And when you divide by that, it's identity. It's one and a half, one and a half. And that is what makes solution possible without assembly. For those of you who, uh, who still cannot believe, I can send you MATLAB code, which is a six line MATLAB code. So this is really the simplest way I can persuade you guys, aha, there are ways to formulate final element without assembly. And there are ways to solve that on assembly final element equations. That gives you same eigenvalues for non-zero part and the same, exactly the same displacement. Okay. So the rest of them are really boring, boring talk. Okay. So you know what I said? If you want to really study engine, you have to disassemble the whole thing and lay out, understand what's going on, and then put them together. So I'm doing the same process. So the first concept I really had to understand in and out was the Lagrangian multiplexes. So I went all the, this is the one thing you can afford to do when you are retired. You have plenty of time. And I happen to, I don't speak very well French, but I happen to read the French. So I went all the way back to Lagrange. And Lagrange presented, not in paper, but in his first edition of uh, mechanics. He said, method tresum, very simple method. He called the Lagrange multiplier method, very simple method. Okay, and that's the first edition. His second edition is uh, two years before he died. He, he passed away 1813. He had a revision, second edition. There he changed the, the, the name as a method uh, multiplication, method of multipliers. And let me tell you, I read a thought, this whole section four, chapter four. I read this chapter four and four editions about 20 times to understand what really he meant. And in fourth uh, edition, and this is a French for those of you French, this is English translation, I changed a little bit from the Wisconsin guys' uh, English translation. So I added something to conform with that. So, aha, the greatest difficulty will be to eliminate undetermined coefficients, which is a lot So he knew himself it's not easy to eliminate lot in principle, he can do it, uh, but he acknowledges it's difficult. So I said, hmm, let me challenge you on this to see whether I can actually overcome the, what he called the greatest difficulty. In French, it's even worse than greatest difficulty. Too the difficulty. It means among all the difficulties, among all the difficulties, this is the, the most difficult one. That's what the French said. So I'm going to have uh, something addition after going through that. So this is a two title couple system. And the displacement over there is, a, is the same at the interface. When you partition this thing out, and as far as I could tell, 
all the Lagrange's book and the, the succession of uh, Lagrange's uh, work, they had this idea. When you partition, you make a DA, DB equal to zero. DA minus DB equal to zero. So mathematically, what that means is P transpose P equal to zero. P transpose means one minus one. Okay. The thing that really made uh, my uh, formulation without assembly and then she being able to solve is partition Lagrange multipliers from original Lagrange's uh, method the multiple culture. So what I do here is I retain while partitioning, I retain the original node. Okay? Then I have two constraints, dA minus dI equal to zero, dB minus dI equal to zero. So I increase number of Lagrange multiplies from one to two. And this one is the one I learned by reading Hamilton carefully. And uh, um, I uh, can well appreciate what Hamilton did was he passed a one second of the ordinary differential equation is two sets of first order ordinary differential equations, which we call now canonical equations. So it doesn't look much, but that's what physicists use. That's what all the mathematicians use. Okay. So it's not exactly in terms of second, second order to first order, but from one Lagrange multiplies to two Lagrange multiplies. So you increase the number of unknowns, just like in Hamilton's principle uh, from uh, displacement position vector position vector plus uh, momentum. Then you have different constraint condition. Why that is important uh, is really my second topic of today's lecture. So everybody knows when you partition this way, this is localized partitioning, by the way. When you assemble, this is a, this equation, that was the that equation. When you assemble over here, the Lagrange multiplier disappears. That's why displacement method became so popular, so automated. Okay. And as I said, for force method, no corresponding assembly procedure has been developed yet now. Just like when you go to a movie place, there is a next movie, okay? Hopefully I'll come back here next year. Uh, wait, yet will be, will be gone. So, you know, worship of Beatles so imagine. Sometimes it's nice to imagine, even though you don't really succeed. Can we really eliminate? It's an American phrase, to away means eliminate. Uh, with the Lagrange multipliers. Without assembly, the element of subsystem. And just to redo, re showing what, what I said here is you have a block diagonal operator. You multiply this match uh, uh, projection operator, and you have equations, and you can do a lot of 
be the dynamics of that step. Now, let me pause just one second. If you, if, which I did before, if I did this one initially, which turns out to be stupid. Thing. So I'm going to directly impose that classical Lagrangian multiplier, PCL transpose times x equal to 0, and the classical one. And PCL in this case turned out to be like this. When you crank it out, you can actually write, oh, looks like an assembly equation, k is a block diagonal, x is PDC is a projection operator. But this projection operator is, is, doesn't make any sense because you have to uh, invert this guy, multiply, invert it again, you apply, invert it again. There's no, I mean, this is terrible. You don't want to use it. Okay. Here is once again using localized Lagrangian multiplies, not the classical Lagrangian multiplies. And let me explain why. You have either four elements, four bar, four plate, what have you. This is a, a mnemonic expression. So you have a four node assembling at one point. Okay, the whole idea is to one of them. In localized Lagrangian multipliers, everything is connected to that. This one connected to that, this one connected. None of them are connected directly. So there are four constrained conditions and they are linearly independent. There is a lambda one, two, three, four are linearly independent. That's number one. Number two is lambda one, two, three, four are the physical reaction force at the node for that partition. It's a physical. Lambda could be just a combination of vector, you know, shear forces and the shear moments. You know, the lambda doesn't have to see the uh, scale, okay? Could be vector. When you want to use classical Lagrange multipliers, you connect from here to there, here to there, here to there, here to there, here to there. You have a total of six possible constraint conditions. In order to make the system to be linearly independent, you can only choose it out of, out of six three. And there is an ambiguity. There's more than ambiguity, actually. Okay. So what the, the domain decomposition guys use is they use all six of them. Then try to solve the iterative. That's when you do not eliminate Lagrange multipliers. If you want to eliminate Lagrange multipliers, this is you. So with that, uh, the, the virtual work is just deformation to his freedom and then uh, constraints. And this is a potential in a dynamic sense. And they are all block diagonal. And next one is a uh, uh, constraint. Lagrange multi localized Lagrange multipliers. And you can see P is a block diagonal, they are Boolean. There's no plus, minus, set to a set. It's only one or two. Okay? And they are unique. So using that, uh, you go through variation and you have a 
du equal to here this one guy is zero that one zero that one zero you have three equations power is a momentum second was the constraint using localized Lagrange multiplies third one is a sum of reaction force that node has to be zero so this is what I call uh Disassemble entire engine. Okay, so this I have disassemble the entire final element first. So the M and K could be elemental or substructure. Okay. Now I'm going to eliminate one by one and come up with the equations in terms of a D. D is not assembled the displacement. D is an unassembled displacement. For element one, there was D1, element two, there's D2, D3, or subtraction one, D1, D2, D3. Okay. So just want to make sure this is a, something I found out the audience didn't understand. If I have these three, then one, two, three, T means D1, D2, D3. D is not a symbol. This is very important because ah, T. What's the difference between a symbol the final one equation and uh, this equation? Okay. So D is not a symbol of displacement. Okay. Some of these Ds may uh, turn out to be the same as uh, I showed in the example problem. Okay. So now I just matter of eliminate symbolic proof. If you don't like this way, there's a symbolic uh, package you can go through. Just put this the whole thing and just get the uh, in terms of the double it, 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 It'll get you there. But that way you have no physical insight what's happening. So sometimes, uh, you know, paper and pencil going through that is really a help. So first thing is I'm going to eliminate uh, represent D double dot in terms of uh, his F total has all the ingredients. There's the external force, there's damping force, there's an uh, internal force, okay? And once I have that, I substitute this one into second equation, then lambda turned out to be like this, and I still have one unknown T uh, double dot F, now, if M is a diagonal, okay, explicit people love diagonal mass matrix, then this MB is a diagonal because B is just a simple Boolean operator. If you use the classical Lagrange multiply, MB will be fully couple matrix, okay? So you find the D double dot F, and here MB is diagonal, and for the match the system, L transpose MBL is diagonal. So this guy is a diagonal matrix. So everything is diagonal. How can you solve for lambda if you don't know D, DF double dot? This one? Yeah. You know DF double dot. Yeah. How can you solve for lambda if you don't know DF double dot? I assume I don't know it, and I substitute this guy over the last equation. Okay. Air transpose the lambda equal to chill. So you don't solve for it. You basically express lambda like that and solve it to get DF double dot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
And after we uh, eliminate lambda and uh, uh, EF, we come up with the, what I consider displacement only partition equation. I call from now on DP equations. And the PD turns out to be identity minus PC. And this is also turned out to be projection operator. That is PC times PC is PC. Because of that, PD times PD is PD. This assures that uniqueness of this formulation, that the, the projection operator assures that it doesn't really alter eigen spectrum, for example. Okay. So they are they are diagonal, if any is diagonal. For quasi-static problem, all you have to do is just take a MD double dot out, and you have this uh, quasi-static equation. And you can put this guy in terms of a residual PD fx term minus a KD, and if you make it to zero by any iterative problem, you have solution for it. So what kind of equations going back and what do, what do I have here? Originally, uh, this was the uh, momentum equation. When you compare the DP equation to original equation with the Lagrange multipliers, P times the lambda is in fact PC times K. So all it, all it has done is in the end, uh, replace the lambda in terms of one assemble partition displacement. So essentially, we have gone back to where we start. That is, from this, you know, come with this one. And I emphasize here again, this may not may not be all that important, but at least hopefully there's some intellectual pleasure, at least for this young man in Casey Park. So the property is the following. Other static problem, choice M can be anything. For example, you can choose a dynamic relaxation mass matrix. Okay. And for those of you who use the FETI or any Align allied method solution of that Lagrangian You have to complement with the principal solution, which is the ridge body model. And this one is doing. Well, I get very problem. This guy is to zero, and setting a uh, d double dot equal to minus omega d. Omega square D. What's really amazing about this is eigenvalues of this lambda is exactly the same as assembled system eigenvalues. This is not assembled. Okay. And eigenvectors of this system, after some scaling, is exactly the same as assembled. Uh, Eigenvectors. That is it. It's a final one. It's P. P is related here. 
This is assembled ion vector. This is partitioned ion vector. That is, for this simple uh, problem, uh, what you have here is the this Vd has also Vd1, Vd2, Vd3. But they are part of global ion vector. And this has a amazingly important property that is we can do again many problems, which I will show you in a minute. And there's also a trace theorem that is some of eigen values are some of uh diagonals of, of, of a k-matrix. And we can readily get that one. And in fact, inverse of that, uh, we have uh, the convergence criteria. If you pick one mode, this how much accuracy you're going to get. If you pick two mode, how much accuracy you're going to get. Because here is not substructural uh, ion value. It's a global ion. Right, I'm going to skip this, but I just want to show you performing that after you've seen all those uh, things, which is, is a culminate in the uh, projection operator PD. And this is what you get. And this is how it gets. Now, this is very important for me personally because uh, after people reading this uh, paper, they might say, oh, we can, we can do the same thing with the classical Lagrange multipliers. The answer is no, you cannot. So when you look at it, here's a localized DP, here's a classical DP. This looks simpler than this, right? You got more lines here, you got less lines over there, okay? The problem is a PDC, PDCL. And PDCL has a, this, what I consider monster matrix. Even when it's a diagonal, this guy has the same size as interface Lagrange multipliers. So let's take an example, which is a little bit more complex. I just added one more bar and assemble that both sides. This is, is a, what I call a pathological problem. It's a simple problem, but it exhibits all the properties you want to see. So the Boolean uh, connector to, again, the Lagrange multiply here is six by six diagonal unit matrix. The classical DP, you remember, on uh, four things coming together, you have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And then over here, you use one. So you have seven. OK? So M matrix is, a, if it's a diagonal, the M inverse is a diagonal, and uh, MB is a diagonal, ML is a diagonal. And classical MCL is fully populated. The size of this matrix is the same as the size of the Lagrange multipliers. The classical Lagrange So it really defeats what's the point in not assembling if you have to spend so much time on it. So 
what I'm saying here is looks like it, one, two, three, four, five, six. You only have four lines, but this is a much simpler formulation than this one. Um, in the paper, I say something about the first order system, which I haven't really worked out other than symbolically. So you can actually, for the first order system, you can come up with the unassemble system where PD has its own form associated with the first order system. And you can write, uh, here I put the RE as a residual because of, sometimes it's nice to put something that is not really uh, completely residual, but with some uh, uh, residual value. So you can have a, exactly the same procedure uh, to come up with the unassembled uh, chronicle uh, systems. I'm gonna have to work a little harder to uh, get that thing working. So today um, I'm going to just talk very quickly and tomorrow I will go in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a much more detail one by one. So, so far we have applied a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm going to just go through only first of all. So this is the equation. Remember, the PD is identity minus PC. So what I did was I put the PC KD is on the right hand side and use the predictor previous value dn. And this one is a completely flat diagram. And it so turns out to be they are unconditionally stable. Even though you uh, extrapolate the coupling terms, okay? Okay, somehow I messed up. Okay. So this is kind of one di one one dimensional problem. So in other words, if you take a, a larger steps with this one, you get a frequency strength the uh, stretching, which is typical. Okay. If you start to reduce step size, it converts it to to the uh, fully uh, implicit solution. But this is so much more efficient because you are dealing with Block diagonal, block diagonal, block diagonal. And all the coupling terms are extra. Player. And our experience shows something like in the one third, half to one fourth of the fully implicit coupled system. Putting this guy into the, the other side make it uh, what I consider monster uh, factorization. Um, and this one is, is just incredibly. Uh, Super efficient. You don't have to worry about coupling. Just each block, each substructure has a uh, block of diagonal operators. Uh, what did you do? In the oh. This is a quasi static problem, three dimensional problem. The gray is chi square root of chi e, uh, y is in one of a uh, square root of chi e, so that it shows a heterogeneity. And uh, this is uh, what I consider the typical fatty. And this one and standard fetties are identical. So I use just the localized Lagrange multiplier instead of classical Lagrange multipliers. And the preconditional is just the generalized inverse K, block by block diagonal K. And when you iterate, there are two things. One is uh, fatty, the basic fatty uh, accuracy stops here. 
where this guy goes all the way down to the full accuracy. And this is important for heterogeneous system. The accuracy is important. And chi is a 10 to the 6 or so. Uh, it's really between 10 to the 6 to uh, 10, 10 to the 3 to 10 to the minus 3. So pretty uh, awful uh, heterogeneous. The next one is a uh, uh, cabbage detection. I think I. It's okay because it's, it's yeah, I think I I skip. Okay. The other one is uh, the uh, the it's okay. There's a localized damage, and we I assume the K3 is 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 a damaged quantity. This is extremely difficult because uh, to identify here where damage occurred is very difficult. So I made an assumption this is where the damage occurred. When you look at the P times K, that part of that personal exam, healthy system comes up to that. Damage system is exactly one tenth of this. And we have some uh, experiment uh, we have done shows the theory actually works. It can really pinpoint where the damage is. Um, this one is a uh, the uh, maybe Javier might be interested. Again, the the correspondence between the assembler system and partition system is such that. We can actually have, a, without having to go through all the details, we can have a, a, a reduced order model, and with the the corresponding the uh, um, error. This is, a, in other words, we don't go through substructural eigenvalues and assemble and all that. We go, we do uh, eigenvalue problem. We choose a number of mode. We have we know exactly what those global modes are, mode shapes are, and we also know what accuracy you're gonna get. And this finally uh, uh, result for this is a classical Craig Hampton method, 1965 paper. So he knew by looking at the criteria. With the four modes, we can get something like 92% of this accuracy. And we compare with the uh, assembled system and only using four modes uh, for uh, step load of using over there. We see no difference between reduced load model with the four degree freedom model versus, uh, I don't know how many. So let me just summarize. Uh, from assembled, we completely disassemble and then put them together by retaining only displacement without assembly. Okay. So we really, I believe we really has returned to where one started, which is simple uh, problems. And, you know, dog is a, is a, is a drug, you know that? So if you use displacement only partition, the equation, this becomes a dog. Okay? But the GP equation is not dog. 
it works. And sorry, I used up a lot of time, but I will try to entertain any questions you may have. Is there any question, comment? This projection uh, matrix that you you the PC or PD, yeah. uh, do you store it on computer or do you just use it as a as a um, is there actually a, a matrix that you have to store or you just use it as a, as a symbol and when you need it you it, just use it? It can do either. All you need is a diagram, the interface of the symbol of L, and the uh, Interface to include them too. B e and L are Boolean operators. M is a diagonal mass. Send it to any processor you need. Yeah. You see the the uh, just to clarify the eigenvalues of the uh, the DOP system are the same as the uh, eigenvalues of the displacement formulation. Yeah. I mean, the largest mode doesn't change. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, in if terms, in terms of time, eigenvalues... in terms of time and step size of the solution, mm -hmm. is, the, the limits are the same as the. Well, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, but in yeah, principle, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a famous uh, um, Ion's theorem that says. Elemental eigenvalues. Yeah. Ah, it's an upper bound theory Logic. by uh, Isaac Fried and uh, uh, Full Science Theory. It says elemental eigenvalues always upper bound of assembly the system, the highest eigenvalues. In terms of, of efficiency uh, for very large scale meshes for very millions of elements. Mm -hmm. How do this method compare with the traditional method in terms of efficiency, like the CPU day, for example? Um, see, number one, I have element generation. Element generation is exactly the same computation as this one or something, OK? Yeah. Number two. You assemble automatically and you have a huge system and you have to do super duper computer or parallel computing using Lagrange modules. Now, we have, we send us all subsystem operators same way to each processor. Yeah. In the solution I was using Lagrange multipliers. They have to have a horrendous uh, inter-process communication. Here, you do not. Friction. Uh, the only thing, the only thing inter-process inter communication you need for iterative solution is a solution vector that couples only solution vector. You don't need any. The projection method, no, that, that, that's you, you don't need to, you don't need to, uh, uh, need communication. yeah, yeah, just like uh, the pedals, you only need the diagonal mass matrix, okay, Boolean B, the Boolean L, that's it, uh, and whatever uh, appropriate for but the Boolean L with the Boolean mm -hmm. and the, the matrix has to be into account of the. Between elements, so the interface. Uh, the I can give you ten line uh, program that would generate all the piece, all the else. You need. It's not huge. It's just that we can make sure to operate, which you extract from the assembly of it. Question comments. I was surprised to see the that the fatty accuracy that stagnates uh, at a given moment with iteration. Well, well, see, 
Then they have to have when you solve a heterogeneous problem using a honeyman flyers, you have a what we call conditioning issues. So that's due to the condition. Yeah. And here it's uh, frankly quite trivial to uh, regularize because. And that's one. The other thing is, please remember, if you are solving for, uh, say, time integration like a, a universe, when you use acceleration as a primary solution vector, that's the most accurate. Anything that you derive from that, velocity displacement is less accurate than acceleration. If you solve for known as a primary displacement, that's the most accurate. And velocity ac accelerations are not as accurate. Here, we solve for displacement. And displacement is the most accurate. Casey, you did not mention, but in fact, you don't need the K matrix. For nonlinear problems, you could work with the residual for quasi-static problem, yeah. of course you don't need it. You well, don't need it. Even for nonlinear, if for dynamics, you don't need. If you have, if you are working with, for instance, nonlinear problems, for instance, plasticity, you only work with the internal force vector. You don't need the the, the assembled stiffness matrix. Ah, that's a good question. You you, you go ten steps further. Here. This guy can include nonlinear terms. Okay, that's what I meant, yeah. So you don't need the K. You, the K could be included in the F. Anything okay. okay. hey, no. Right. Yes, yes, yes. But this is very important, I think. You went much further. I went further? <laughs> <laughs> because I was uh, uh, leaning on the shoulders of uh, Casey. Make <laughs> <laughs> sure I'm not sleeping. I'm not sleeping while I'm walking. So I, I really hope that my hope is uh, in the future we, we can collaborate by using this uh, this idea and and complement with the force method. Uh, there are, I'm I'm really quite excited about the force method that, that I'm working. I'm surprised you didn't end up with may the force be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody suggested that. Too. Well, I have done it. <laughs> so somebody suggested. Yeah. When I was, when if I am like a fifty or younger, I would have said that, but not at my young age. No. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you next talk tomorrow. Thank you.